problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear. They don't know me, so they don't want me. You carry me into them. I cannot go alone. Be the fire of my love. I want to enter their homes, their dark, unhappy holes. The Jesus wanted to be present where suffering is greatest, where pain is greatest, where poverty is greatest, where illness is greatest, where sin is greatest. My name is Father Curtis Cunningham. I'm a missionary of charity uh, with the Missionaries of Charity Fathers, congregation founded by St. Teresa of Calcutta from the United States. And uh, now I'm working in Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. I was uh, a student. We studied in Rome. Uh, one of my companions had done his uh, experience, mission experience here in Africa but also my superior at the time when I was in Rome had been one of the founding fathers of our mission here in Africa, and he, they used to tell stories. So when I was approaching ordination, I was asked, where would you like to go? Basically, they were saying, if you had a choice, where would you like to go? And I didn't hesitate, I said Africa. I'm an African-American, and, uh, and so my roots are here and I just felt a real call to come here. The poverty of the people here. Yeah, I just felt a real call to come here and, and I had a sense that I would be coming home. And so I really wanted to come home. You know, we, uh, we work in the slums. Our house isn't right in the slums. We're just a stone's throw from the slums, so to speak. And so in a certain sense, the slums come to us and we try and bring the people of the slums into our home. Our ministry is a ministry, first of all, of presence, is being present to the people in their own suffering. For me, what's the significance of our presence? That our street boys know somebody loves us. We're in need, we can go to the fathers. Uh, they come to us for food, they come to us for health concerns, they come to us to hear the word of God, they come to us to be welcomed, because we're one of the only places that actually welcomes them, to be treated with the dignity that they have. Uh, when they come to our house to eat, we wash their hands, we greet them, sometimes we embrace them, 
uh, even with their dirty clothes and their, their smell and the little, the small little bugs that are <laughs> living with them. Uh, we give them a plate and we say, Karibuni Chakula, welcome to the food, enjoy your food. We shake their hands one on one. Um, so I think our significance is that we're able to be God's presence in their lives. We're able to be God's tenderness in their lives. We're able to be that, uh, that someone who cares about them. And all the material work that we do is just an excuse to let them know God loves you. One day I was walking from the slums, coming back home, and one street boy came up and caught my hand. So we started to walk together, hand in hand. And uh, some of the neighbors around, they got angry with the street boy. How could this dirty street boy touch father? And they asked him, is father your friend that you should touch him like that? And he looked at them and he said, yes, father's my friend. <laughs> he said, they say in Swahili, they say, Mi father wait to, he's our father. Uh, he's our father. That was very, very touching. Uh, that they know that somehow we're theirs. Somehow we're theirs. We're for them. And our co-founder, Father Joseph Langford, an American priest, he always said that our mission is a mission to the heart. You know, as missionaries of Charity Fathers, our work is a little bit different than the work of the sisters. Mother Teresa used to say that we as fathers, we complete the work. So that as the sisters and brothers, they care for the, the physical hunger of people. We fathers are supposed to feed the people with the Word of God and the Eucharist. As the sisters and brothers care for the physical wounds, of people, we're supposed to care for their spiritual wounds, especially in confession. Um, so we as Missionaries of Charity Fathers, we really see as our primary mission, evangelization of the poor. Mother Teresa used to say, it's not what you do, but it's the love that you put into the doing. It's very challenging. It's a real examination of conscience. Uh, it's very easy, even as a missionary of charity, to become a workaholic because the needs are great. Uh, we could work 24 hours according to what the people need. Uh, but how to put that love into what we're doing? And what we see is, without prayer, it's impossible. Without prayer, there's no more joy. Without prayer, the needs of the people are overwhelming. We get stressed out. But with prayer, of meeting Jesus, of not becoming the Savior ourselves, but letting Him be the Savior. The people we meet in the streets, in the hospital, in the slums, in the wards of our sisters and brothers' homes, uh, all their needs, the people we meet in the confessionals, the people who come to our house to seek any type of help they can get. Uh, it can be really overwhelming, but it's a real examination of conscience. This person that I met, did I see Jesus on the cross, suffering and crying, I thirst to me in this moment? And am I able to respond to his thirst with love or with vinegar? Uh, so it's a real challenge because at the end of the day, in our own humanity, our own weakness, our own brokenness, I can look and say, I gave Jesus vinegar today. Thank God I can also say I gave him water of love as well. In many 
many years ago when I first came to Africa and I was a young priest, uh, and we started the soup kitchen, this feeding program for the poor, I uh, was noticing there were some children during school time who were still coming to eat when they should be at school. There were about six children, uh, four boys and two girls. So I started to talk to their parents and to see why they weren't coming and there were diff different problems. But uh, one particular boy was an orphan and he became very good friends with two other boys whose mother had abandoned them with their father who was an alcoholic. And they would just roam the streets and they were happy boys. But they would roam the streets looking for plastic to recycle or metal to recycle. They were small, less than 10 years old, and they were just beginning to taste drugs, to sniff glue. Praise God, we were able to find a school to send them to, a boarding school for children with some sisters. All of them graduated. One of them met the Holy Father when he came and, uh, and was able to share how uh, he was saved from the streets through our own ministry. And uh, he's now a youth leader in the parish where he is. An orphan, a youth leader, and he's also helping us to evangelize the youth here. So, uh, yeah, people's lives are being changed. As missionaries of charity, we, Mother Teresa used to teach us, whatever you do to the least of my brothers, and she would teach us on one hand, you did it to me. She called it the gospel on five fingers. That Jesus would tell us, whatever we do to the poor, you did it to me. Uh, and so there's a real part of our vocation. All the love we have for Jesus, we want to give to the poor. We want to show him our love for him by loving them. And there are so many moments in every day where we experience God is loving through me. It's God who thirsts to touch the heart of this person. It's God who wants to give this person a smile. It's God who wants to listen to this person's story. As even though you're busy and you don't have time and there are a million other responsibilities, but God is saying, be my fire of love to this one. I met Mother Teresa the first time when I was 21 years old. I went to Mexico to give my come and see. Uh, just before going for my come and see, Mother Teresa came to where I was volunteering with the sisters and I got a chance to be her driver, driving her around from place to place. Uh, when she was getting ready to go to Mexico, I actually drove her to the airport. And uh, as she was getting on the plane, uh, the Superior General of the Missionaries of Charity Fathers was accompanying her, and he asked me, when are you going to do your come and see? And Mother Teresa said, oh, he's a vocation? And Father said, yes, we're just waiting for him. And Mother said, let him just come now with us on the plane. <laughs> in the meantime, Mother Teresa had a heart attack and almost died there in Mexico. Uh, so after the month, when I went down for my come and see, Mother Teresa was in the hospital. And after a few days, after about a week, then I during my come and see, she was released and she was better. But she didn't go back to Calcutta. She stayed in Mexico to recover a bit. I want to meet mother and talk to her. I've driven her, but when I was driving her, the sisters told me, don't say anything to Mother Teresa. <laughs> so I went to ask the, the sisters, I'd like to speak to mother. And, uh, and they told me, come back at 2 p.m. It was a Sunday. So I came back and they sat me down in their chapel on the carpet, just like in India. Um, and I sat in the back of the chapel and after a few minutes, Mother Teresa came in and she sat down right next to me in the chapel. And she asked me, uh, how is your come and see? I said, I love it, it's wonderful. And do you want to come back? Yes, Mother, I want to come back. And 
what did the father say? <laughs> did they invite you? I said, yes, they invited me. And she told me, do whatever the fathers tell you, that will be God's will for you. Then she became a little bit serious. She said, I want to ask you a question. Do you want to be holy? Now I was 21 years old, sitting next to a saint, uh, and I answered very quickly, yes, mother, I want to be holy. And she said, no, don't answer quickly. Do you really want to be holy? If you don't want to be holy, I don't need you. Don't come, stay home. I need holy priest to serve my poorest of the poor. I don't need numbers, meaning I don't need a lot of priests. I need holy priest to serve my poor. So then I come down and I looked at her and I said, yes, mother, I want to be holy. And she said, good. If you want to be holy, you have to pray. Then she said, now you remember, when you will go to see Jesus and you stand before him, he will tell you, whatever you did to the least of my brothers, you did to me. This gospel on five fingers, you did it to me. Our lives are filled with joy. One year as a missionary priest in Tanzania, uh, we were four priests there. That Easter we had the joy of baptizing 500 people on Easter. The joy of one mama. We were giving a retreat during Lent and, and uh, one mama who was pregnant the whole time during Lent on, uh, what was it, two Saturdays before Easter Sunday, she came to the retreat. And she was carried on a bicycle 35 kilometers on a country road. She was fully pregnant. And she reached on Friday night for the Saturday retreat. And her water broke. And she didn't want to tell me because she would go to the hospital and she would miss the retreat and she was sure Father Curtis won't baptize me if I'm not on the retreat. <laughs> and so we sent her there to the clinic in our village and she gave birth to a beautiful baby. And, uh, and she was baptized two weeks later on Holy Saturday. And her children were baptized on Easter Sunday. Uh, her joy became my joy. <laughs> Jesus, in the Gospels, he called very broken people. Uh, he called sinners. He called wounded people. And in our woundedness, very often we can wound others. Uh, uh, and I'm a very wounded person. Uh, many wounds. Uh, as an African American, the son, the descendant of slaves, growing up in a country, experiencing racism firsthand, uh, but also uh, the son of parents who lived through the civil rights movement, uh, who suffered a lot of racism. Um, I've suffered abuse in my own life, uh, sexual abuse. Uh, and so there is a certain hardness in my heart. And that experience, I think, made me quite hard. Uh, people would still say I'm pretty strict, but I think I was hard also. And then meeting the poor and their poverty and their lives and their struggles 
and how my hardness can hurt them. Um, that has changed me. Um, as the Lord has helped me to see my own brokenness, to see where my own, um, yeah, my own shortcomings, where they're coming from, where they're rooted, what they're rooted in, and then also seeing how they affect the poor. Living with the poor, working with the poor, caring for the poor. Uh, yeah, that, that's changed me. It's softened me. Contact with the poor, but also more than anything else, the contact with Jesus. Meeting Jesus in my poverty and his own love, his own healing touch, his own uh, power, uh, helping me to forgive and helping me to love and filling me with his compassion, even the man who abused me. Uh, that just changed me a lot. I just felt he was really calling me and my answer was just, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Here I am in my brokenness. This is me uh, when I fall. Here I am. I'm still yours. This is me. Uh, you called me just the way I was. And you've changed me in so many ways. And there's so much that still needs to change. But I'm still yours. Uh, here I am. Amanda Markeski for Shalom World Television. I'm one of the many who love this 24-7 mission-driven family channel. The channel that brings the peace of Christ to over 375 million English-speaking people all over the world. I want to share a simple message of gratitude for your prayers and generous support. I also want to share some exciting news. We've just passed the threshold of reaching almost 3 million households our presence on social media continues to grow. We now have close to half a million Facebook followers. You already experience the difference that Shalom World makes. And you probably know that what we do is the result of your prayers and your financial support. We can't do this without you. Our 1,000 plus original programs have been made possible because you watch, you pray, and you support us so generously. But all this good news is not the full story. Television production requires creative, technical, and financial resources. Sometimes the challenges of making ends meet seem overwhelming. When many disciples abandoned Jesus, our Lord asked Peter if he too would go. St. Peter replied, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This truth is why we're here to help share the life-giving word, Christ himself, with all the world. Shalom World continues its mission because the Holy Spirit inspires us, sustains us, and inspires you to work with us. So let me ask you, are you willing to help enrich and transform people's lives? 
Will you help us continue our media apostolate? Below is a link that will direct you to our donation site. There are a few options, so please find one that works best for you. If you can't donate right now, please continue to support us with your prayers. On behalf of Shalom World, thank you for helping us spread the gospel. Know that we pray for you daily. And may God bless you abundantly.